What is up, people? This is Joe the Tenshi back for another TNNT rant. Now, um, today I'm just going to be talking about um, the live action series, The Next Mutation, as well as uh, the four kids take on it, uh, or the Fox Box take on it, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it at the time, uh, of the Ninja Turtles. So let me start with the series that not a lot of people like. Um, <laughs> the, 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 uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: The Next Mutation. Now, this had a lot of fun, you know, a lot of funny, quirky moments, and you know, the turtles are getting older. They look, they look a little older. Their head, you know, they they change their headbands, they change their gear, they change a little bit in their personality. But other than that, you could tell who was who. Uh, the weapon, you know, the weapons were changed around. Like for example, uh, my, uh, Michelangelo did not have his nunchucks. He had a whole other weapon, which I cannot. Remember. Remember right now, um, instead of two uh, blades, um, Leonardo only had one, um, and it and uh, the biggest the biggest change was they added a fifth turtle, which was Venus, aka Shinobi, aka you know the female turtle. When you know it it it, it doesn't get a lot it doesn't get a lot of uh, credit for doing things that that it did that were different. But there were a lot of things that were that were missing, like no April O'Neil, no mention of Casey, no no none of that. But they did have the shredder, they had the foot, they had brand new enemies later on, like the dragons that kind of looked like they came out of the you know the uh, Jim Hansen's Muppet Shop. <laughs> um, but you know it, it it but you know it was cool. It was cool. Um, one of the episodes that sticks out to me the most would probably be the first one when Venus was first introduced. Um, she's learned she learns that that the turtles and this you know and, and this one were all bought you know all bought separately. They're not brothers and she's not their, you know she's not technically their sister, but they all work together and they treat each other like brothers and that's what she's learning. She's also learning how to live in the sewers in New York instead of living in Japan. It starts out. In, uh, in in New York, um, you can definitely tell there's some reminiscence of the movies of the uh, last two movies, Ninja Turtles three as well as two. Um, this is way before the fourth one even came out. So, um, and you know, it wasn't the it wasn't the best, but it's still enjoyable. It was still enjoyable to watch. Um, I like how they had their vehicles. They had a jeep. And Raphael, being you know, being the rugged one, he had he he had uh, the motorcycle. Now, one thing that no one ever brought up: how the heck do they get a license? I I you know, honestly, I know that's just being nitpicky, but how the heck do four walking talking turtles get licenses or registrations for those vehicles, for that matter? They ain't even supposed to be seen. You know what I'm saying? But hey, that's just you know, that's just one. You know, that's just one nitpick I didn't even think about until just now. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, what you know, what else can what else can I say about it? It was new, it was different. There were a lot of there was a lot of things missing, which probably pissed people off. And the biggest thing that I saw, and it wasn't even the fact that they had a female turtle uh, who looked like you know old school Leonardo, um, only only you know thinner and you know. She was female. Um, the fact of the matter was, it seemed like the voices were a little off. Um, not so much Donatello and um, Leonardo, but Michelangelo's and Raphael's. If you listen to the two, vo you know the two voices. If you ever, if anybody ever gets the DVDs, now being distributed by Shout Factory and enti the entire box that is out right now. Um, it it just seems like one would fit more than the other. If they switched the voices around, it would be a little bit more believable. The attitudes were there, but the voices didn't really seem to match. Um, but once again, that was one thing I noticed when I got older. Me and one of my best friends, we had noticed that, and we just laughed about it. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> we could definitely see that happening. If they switched the voices, it would be it, it would have been it would have been better. The stories were a little iffy but it's you know but it was fox kids it was on the fox kids block you know what i'm saying it was by saban another thing um saban is not exactly known for having great written tv but good shows like they were the same people that you know that that chops food and dubbed 
the Power Rangers for us. And there was even a Power Rangers episode where this version of the Turtles actually make an appearance. Now, granted, they are, you know, you know, they are puppets of the uh, of the enemy that the Power Rangers were fighting at the time. It was in Power Rangers in space. They were being controlled, but they did, you know, they did um, at the you know at the end they did come together and fight as a team. Now, I thought that was pretty cool. They have that, you know, they have that collaboration going on. Um, it was a bond, so they could, you know, so they could do that. Um, now, let's get on to the next, let's get on to the next show, which was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles brought on by the Fox Box and then later on 4Kids TV. Now, right out of the gate, this was before I discovered the comic books. So there was a lot of differences. It was darker. The animation was better. April O'Neil was working for Baxter Stockman. Baxter Stockman was black. I mean, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, what, what else? They gave they gave Casey a bigger backstory. The purple dragons. The fact that his parents were, you know, that his parents were, you know, his family was killed by them, and the, and there was there was more you know there was more violence involved. The Shredder was a little. It, a lot more serious. Um, there was no mention of Krang until like later on in one season, uh, but it was just a, you know it was just you know it was just which was, it was just joke it was just jokingly going with the with the show. It it really aside from the aside from the fact that they had to you know change some stuff up because it was a, you know a four kids cartoon. It was a darker interpretation of the turtles, a darker incarnation. Um, you know, and the turtles look, you know, the turtles look diesel. I mean, they, they, they look you know, like just mad, you know, just mad buff. Their headbands were all, you know, their headbands were all over the place. Their personalities were exactly what you would, you know, what you would expect. It was conflict between family. There was, me, you know, there was mental, uh, kind, you know, it was emotional conflict with, my, with, uh, with, uh, Leonardo questioning, you know how good of a leader he is after certain events happen. Uh, Splinter even got in the mix a couple times. You know he he you know he looked dope. Um, what what else? Um, Michael you know Michelangelo was just Michelangelo. He was he was straight up he was straight up Michelangelo. But certain things they didn't take out like like he could he, he never he, when he tried this every time he tried to say Kawabunga they would stop him. Um, you know because it was supposed to be like you're not supposed to say that anymore. This is a new time. It's a new place. You know what I'm saying? And it was great, you know. It was great for what it, it was great for what it was. I I I was surprised that four kids after you know after Fox Box became four kids before Fox chickened out and stopped doing their you know and stopped doing their lineup. It has how dark it was. Baxter Stockman every time he kept on coming back as either some sort of cyborg or some sort of new attachment was involved. He wasn't the bumbling, uh, you know, the bumbling. Uh, you know, just kind of conceited genius that was working under the shredder. He was working under the shredder, yes, but he felt that he wanted more. Res he wanted more respect. His inventions were all like almost top notch. The first part of the story went along with the uh, with the actual comic books. You could tell what you know that they went with the source material on this one. April O'Neil was working. You know, was working with him as a lab tech. And she finds the turtles and swords that way, and it was it was a pretty cool interpretation. I I I have to say, I wish I collected the DVDs when you know later on, but you know, but you know, every 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 generation, there's a there's something about certain shows that will never go away. Like for like for example. Ninja Turtles keeps on getting, re, you know, keeps on getting rebooted. Hint, the uh, newest show coming out. And I just saw the preview for the first episode, and I have to say, there was a lot of funny moments to that one, you know, that one too. And I really hope it does. I really hope it does well, and I'm really pulling for it. I plan on doing a full review because that was just a preview episode on Nickelodeon that was just on. I plan on doing a full review of the hour-long series premiere. After I after I see it, I won't be able to see it when it actually premieres, but they will be rerunning it later on. So uh, wait, you know, if you guys are interested in what I have to say about it, uh, keep on the lookout for that review. Comment on, you know, comment on this um, on this video. Let me know, 
you know, Turtle fans, share your thoughts. If you haven't seen the other uh, rants, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna put them all over this video. You know what I'm saying? Click here, here, everywhere. Oh, no. Oh, oh and one other thing I forgot to mention. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention. There was another movie. There was an animated movie for Ninja Turtles, the 25th anniversary of the Ninja Turtles, called Turtles Forever. And what they did was it was an interdimensional thing. First, you're introduced to the current 2000 turtles. Then you get introduced again to the 1987 turtles. Granted, none of their voices were the same. I mean, four kids apparently did not want to pay uh, for the uh, you know for the original voice cast. You know, so they worked with what they had. You know, um, like okay. <laughs> um, Leonardo sounds like Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh, and he's also done a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, different voices. But that's that's the first thing that came to my mind when I heard Leonardo's voice for the first time. Uh, that was 1987, Leonardo. Um, everybody else seemed to be okay. You know, I wish they, I wish they actually uh, ponied up the bucks to, you know, for the original cast. But you can't, you know, you can't have everything. Um, the story, the story itself. Is you know, is flawed. I ain't give a crap, man. I just sat there and I'm like, oh my god, there's an interdimensional story. It's kind of interlocking, and they actually do it. They even show you how big the total. The they even do the multiverse theory. You know about about the fact that there that there that there. It, well, not the fact, but the theory that there are multiple universes and multiple and you know and multiple times, multiple places. When, you, like, say you're here doing one thing, and another and another version of you complete, it would be completely different. And they work, and they use that to their advantage in this story. They showed you the entire turtle verse, everything from the comics, the movies, the you know the car, you know, the other cartoons, the live action series. They even had the original 1985 comic. You know, Mirage Company Turtles in there, and they were brutal. Those guys were no nonsense, black and gray, gritty turtles. And yo, know, that was just great. You know, that just sent me into nostalgia, you know, nostalgia feeling, one thousand percent. I love the turtles, man. Always have, always will. I don't give a crap how old I get. I will forever be a turtle fan. I will forever be an anime fan. I will forever be a fan of cartoons. And I forever will be a turtle fan to the day I die. <laughs> and now, I'm going to go scarf on some pizza. Hope you enjoy these rants. Peace and love. Check out for that review coming very soon.